Mm-hmm. Bye. Okay, let's get this going. It's really all about the image. This one is different, and so I'm going at it with a looser touch. Mind you, I don't mean the line is loose, because it's still tight. The difference is that each stroke is like the stroke of a letter. I equate brush strokes with letter strokes in writing. I tried studying calligraphy long ago. I learned the different letter forms throughout the ages. I was able to do my version of about a dozen different styles of letters. If anything, I came to appreciate the beauty of well-made letters. As far as calligraphy is concerned, I don't think I had a mindset for it. You have to be consistent to be a capable calligrapher. And I like variety too much. That is my way of excusing myself from my next M or K looking different from the last one. Though I gave that up, I brought a number of things from it into my pictorial work. First of all, there's the idea of negative space around a letter. When you make a few black lines on a white surface, it is not just about the black lines you're making, but about the spaces in between, which you are also creating. When I look at Asian calligraphy, there are certain letter form styles that feel like the calligrapher is striving to make the negative space of the white ground balanced with the black positive strokes. I see it in certain comic book artists that work with a brush. They give that sense of balance with the grace of tapered brush lines that is a wonder to behold. I'm thinking of Jeffrey Catherine Jones, Walt Kelly, and the cartoonists that came from the Noel Sickles Milton Kniff School of Drawing. Artists like Frank Robbins, but especially Lee Elias, my favorite of the Kniff influenced cartoonists. There's also the guy that did the original Dennis the Menace comic strip. I can't remember his name right now. That crazy glue on the upper part is for repairing brushes whose ferrules disconnected from the handle. The dagger brush I'm using is a type of brush that has a short life. Eventually, the hair is splayed and it becomes harder to get that point. All brushes get ruined eventually, but that is okay. I used to buy expensive sable brushes and then lamented the death of one of these close friends. But I now buy cheap synthetic brushes in bulk. When one gets the hair splaying, I get a new one. Brushes go through two lives in my studio. When they get demoted as a splayed brush, they enter a more interesting era. The hairs go in all directions, and I use this dynamic to create patterns or haphazard effects. I might try drawing one line of foliage and get three lines instead. Each brush gets ruined in a different way, and so I have different ruined brushes for different jobs. Some create shapes. Some form a cloud of dots. You have to find that quirk in each one. 
The consistency of the paint and the texture of the surface you're making your marks on affect this. If you like this channel, like and subscribe to Zapstrack Kinetics. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to new videos. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ray Armenteros. That's R-E-Y-A-R-M-E-N-T-E-R-O-S. And on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash Ray underscore Armenteros. That's R-E-Y underscore A-R-M-E-N-T-E-R-O-S. Thanks for watching.